Hello and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast. I am your host, Fabrice Nye, and joining me here in the Murrieta Studios is Dr. David Burns. Hi, David. Hi, Fabrice. Dr. David Burns has been a pioneer in the development of cognitive therapy, and he is the creator of the new team therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 20 languages. He is an emeritus adjunct clinical professor of psychiatry at the Stanford University School of Medicine. Welcome to episode 122 of the Feeling Good podcast. Back again on the show today is uh, Jill Levitt, beloved guest from uh, what our listeners uh, report back to us. Today we have a topic that I'm sure will be of interest to a lot of people. And we brought Jill in because uh, we, we had a little gathering some time ago and uh, Jill said that uh, she had difficulty sometimes saying no to things. We were fortunate because she actually said yes to being on the show today. I don't know if that was, that was done with uh, full agreement with her own heart of hearts, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll check that with her. Hey, Jill. Hi, Fabrice. It's fun to be back here with you and David. Thanks for having me. So, um, David, today's topic is really about negative thoughts, as, as many of, uh, of our topics are. The, the situation is like this. Somebody will be asking you if you can do something, uh, sometimes out of sheer need or sometimes because they're trying to manipulate you uh, or sometimes they're just uh, proposing something that's uh, really interesting and we find ourselves saying yes, but it's a yes that's uh, often a conditional yes where we, we wish we didn't have to or we wish we had time but we don't really have it. Why don't we say no in, in those uh, situations? Well, that was well, well stated and we're just so thrilled to have you on the show today, Jill, and I want to put you in the spotlight here uh, to, to the max, and I know you, Fabrice, have one of your favorite themes and, and topics. I want to put you in the spotlight here, too, Fabrice. I, I, I've had a few patients in my, you know, clinical work who got just just super overwhelmed in their lives, just working endless hours because they 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 couldn't say no. They they felt the need to to say yes to everyone, and then. I've been worried about you, Jill, because, and, and all the women in our Tuesday training group, to tell you the truth, that there's so many demands on you, on women in general. I mean, and you're doing so much and you do everything so beautifully, uh, but, uh, you know, how, how possibly you can keep up with all of these things, the Tuesday training and your beautiful family and your, your sons and doing podcasts for us and just doing so many things for free teaching uh, on online, you know, paid teaching work workshops and, and it's fun. And you, you, you get to where like, like yourself, you're, you're so talented. So most of the things you do turn out great. Uh, and then you're going to be in very heavy demand be because you do things so, so beautifully. And, uh, and and sometimes you you you've, you've got to say no and 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 trim back on, on on life and not try to do so much for so many people. But it can be hard to to say no for at least two or three or four different reasons. One is the need for approval. Uh, you know, often the fear of disapproval, fear of conflict, for fear of being unloved uh, is there. Some some people have a submissive mindset. Uh, I, I treated a woman who was kept getting trapped in unfulfilling love relationships. And, and it, it turned out when I worked with her that she had this belief that her role in a love relationship is to give, give, give. And then her belief that her partner's role will be to take, take, take. And that for her, the nature of a love relationship was kind of like being in bondage but she didn't realize she was setting it up like, like this. And when it came out in a therapy session, when we did the interpersonal downward arrow, it was tremendously revealing to, to her that she thought that she had to earn love by, by giving, giving, giving. That, that's, that's certainly one of many patterns. And then the pattern you're in, Jill, 
among others, is just loving so many things and being so talented at so many things that you want to say yes because it's going to be cool. The things like today's podcast might be really cool and fun. And and then Fabrice, you're focusing uh, he heavily on the probably the most common aspect of it is this fear of disapproval and, and, you know, needing to please people and thinking if I just say yes and do what they're asking me to do, they're going to love me and, uh, and approve of me. Well, thanks. I just wanted to say that so, it warms my heart, everything you said, David. It's so, so kind of you. And, um, and yeah, what you said is true that I, I brought, I happened to bring up in conversation to you and Fabrice that I was working on saying no to more things and that it was, challenging and then it cracked me up because you guys then said oh that's 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 great we're doing this podcast on uh, we want to do this podcast on saying no will you do it and I said no because <laughs> I kind of thought you were setting me up for like work you know exposure therapy or practicing saying no so I said no that's that's a terrible idea I have many more things I need to do with my time but then you kind of came back to me and let me know it wasn't actually a joke and um and yeah, so so here we are. But I'm happy to be here with you guys. And I I, I resonate, uh, you know, personally to a lot of the things you've said. It it is sometimes hard to say no to people that I really love and care about, in part because I want to please them and approve, and and maybe because I want their approval, but for sure because I want them to be happy. And you know, I think the thing they're asking for sounds reasonable, and I'd love to be able to do it for them. And then saying no to things professionally in a way, you know, is is sort of um, stressful and makes me feel kind of sad too because I feel like I'm I'm not pursuing what could be a really exciting opportunity. Um, uh, and also, I just wanted to say, not only is it relevant for me personally, but literally the the hour session that I had right before this podcast was working with a patient who's just taken on a job, and it's so fantastic that she got this job and she's feeling so excited, but she keeps being asked to work extra shifts. And she keeps saying yes. And so here she is totally depleted and exhausted and trying to figure out why she's feeling so sad and anxious. And it, it's very and angry and angry. Yeah. Which is definitely harder for her to acknowledge. Um, but I, I definitely resonate with that, but you know, and it's just very clear it's because she's um, taking on way more than, then she really wants to and she feels like she needs to and that's the role that she needs to play is you know the person who always says yes so yeah i think a lot of people struggle with this so uh, i'm interested in in the the reasons why you uh tend to say yes and mm -hmm. uh, and also in particular to ask you how you you overcome that how how do you get to the no and and what what is your internal process to go from the automatic yes to no i'm not going to do that yeah um and i guess it depends on the context but uh, i i have um also for example in my private practice i have a private practice where i see patients and i really really enjoy it and love helping people and enjoy the work um and so it is sometimes hard to say no to a referral from a a, a colleague um and i would say that that why is that hard for me to say no because i um don't want that referral source to dry up um or to disappoint the colleague and because i have the sense that i might be able to help the patient so i feel um sad uh and maybe uh yeah kind of get a little guilty um saying no right even if i don't have the time in my schedule so a little bit of, uh, of guilt and a little bit of uh, fear that, uh, you know, your colleague, colleague will be disappointed. Mm -hmm. and so, but at times you, you have to get to the point where you're saying, no, how, how do you do that? How, how do you yeah. overcome those, uh, those uh, difficult emotions to get to, okay, well, no, not today. Right. I think two, two things that come to mind, and I'm sure you guys will help me think of others. Um, one thing is having a good alternative. Um, and I think this goes across the board, right? If you're going to say no to someone, but you can come up with a good backup plan for them, you know, like, no, I can't, but I know someone who can, um, that always helps. And so in this particular situation, having fantastic colleagues that I 
um, feel really good referring to is very helpful to me because then I can say, oh, I wish I could see this patient. Sounds like a great referral. I totally appreciate you thinking of me. I can't at this point. My practice is full, but you know, I can connect you with so-and-so who I know has openings and is a great therapist, right? So having kind of a good backup plan helps me. Um, and the other thing, I guess I have to say the clearest thing, and I think David knows this, but is just reminding myself, I have to say no to that because I'm saying yes, essentially to my family. And so being really clear in my mind that why can I not see patients past 5 p.m. and just squeeze in another patient is because I have a commitment to myself that I'll be home with my boys at 5.15 every day. I think what you're saying is really great. Uh, there's also a motivational issue. See, we can teach people a lot of techniques for saying no. Mm -hmm. But the question is the mo motivation, uh, because we're doing this because we're motivated to do it, uh, yeah. because we, we get high by saying yes, and, and by, you know, they're going to love me, and it's going to be so great. I'm going to have so many accomplishments. You know, this basing your self-esteem on your accomplishments is part yeah. of it. Basing your self-esteem on getting everyone's approval is, is, is a part of it too. And so we've yeah. got to think about paradoxical agenda setting if we're working with a patient and the motivation thing, something as simple as a straightforward or paradoxical cost benefit analysis could, could be, could be a useful step along the way. Like, you know, what are yeah. the advantages and disadvantages of, of saying yes all the time? And, you know, one advantage is it, makes me feel really important and it makes me feel like a superman or a superwoman and yes. and, and 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 i'm going to have these uh, accomplishments and that's going to mean i'm more worthwhile and i'm going to be more well known and and uh you know blah 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 what what are some more advantages of you know saying yes to everybody well those are good ones um well, i i would yeah, I would say that some advantages might be um, kind of uh, negative advantages uh, like uh, alleviate guilt. Yeah. Not feel guilty, mm -hmm. uh, not feel ashamed, not feel uh, unloved, and so yep. on. Avoid conflict. Yeah, avoid conflict, yes. Uh, so so avoid cool. rejection. Yeah. Um, uh, all of those things. And I think if I'm working with a patient, you want to just say, what are the techniques that a therapist might use? I, I would do a, a paradoxical cost-benefit analysis. I would not try to help the patient by putting the advantages and disadvantages. I just say, what are the advantages of saying yes to everybody yeah. and, and getting real, real overcommitted? It also shows you're kind of a hero, mm -hmm. and it shows you're, you have kind of superhuman stamina. <laughs> and, and you know, all, <laughs> right? and, and all and all of these things, and it might also uh, help relieve you from uh, guilt and anxiety and worrying. Like, might you might find there are things that you're upset about if if you have time on your hands, and just keeps you constantly, you know, producing and being productive and and thinking how how, how wonderful. How wonderful you are. And then having listed at least five or 10 or 15 or more advantages of saying yes to everyone, then I would say to the patient, well, maybe given all of those advantages, maybe that's, that's, that's not something that, that you'd want to change. And we could also add to the list of advantages what it shows about you that's positive and awesome. What does it show about you, Jill, that's positive and awesome that you're saying yes so much? Oh, that I maybe want to be helpful to other people. Uh, that my relationships with other people are really important to me. And also that, that you're willing to give of yourself mm. for, for others. And also that you're still kind of humble in, in spite of your incredible success in your career and with, and, and with your, with your family. Uh. Yeah, I suppose that's true. I mean, I love what you're saying about the paradoxical CBA, David, because everyone needs to realize that if you have a patient in your office, like I did today, who's doing too much and not saying no, and then you tell them what they need to do, first of all, they're going to say yes to you, right? Because, yeah. right, they're going to agree with you because that's the kind of person they are, but they're at the same time going to know that they're not going to leave your office and go and say no to people, right? You can't 
convince someone that this is what they need to do to change, even if you can see that it's kind of killing them. Right? Yeah. So you, yeah. you absolutely need to set the agenda with them. They need to be driving the show. You can, right? And, and, and the way you do that is by thinking, well, you know, I, may, maybe this isn't something you'd want my help with. Maybe saying yes to people is really working for you and shows some really beautiful things about you. What, maybe we should make a list of all the reasons to keep saying yes to people. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's yeah. great. That's great. So let's say we've, and, and of course, before you even do that, you want to empathize with the person. Sure. You know, which goes without saying, just, my gosh, it sounds like you're overwhelming, overwhelmed and giving, 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 and life is moving along fast, and and you wish you had more time for yourself, and, 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 and yet you're, you know, you're doing so many things that you love, and, and you don't want to hurt people's feelings, and tell me more what that's like for you just not try to persuade the patient in any direction then we get into the paradoxical agenda setting and then having done those two things if the person really convinces you that they want to stop saying uh, yes so much can we list uh, two or three or four or five really cool things that that uh, our listeners can do if they've decided if you've made your own list of all the benefits of, of being submissive and being a yes person, what, what are some uh, exercises that they could do to, to learn to start saying no? And also, what are some traps that people are going to fall into when they first try to say no, and then you're going to get burned because of the way you're saying saying no? So, uh, what, what, what are some techniques? Before we, we, we do that, I wonder if uh, it'd be also useful to look at the uh, right side column of the cost-benefit analysis because we've done the paradoxical part. But what could be some reasons actually to, to do say no and to, to stop saying yes? Or what, what are the disadvantages of saying yes, right? Yeah, what are the disadvantages of saying yes? Right. Well, um, I would say, for, if I answer on my, my own, um, if I, well, it could be specific and general. Like if I say yes to another patient, um, uh, I'll have, you know, no time for paperwork or emails or anything. And so I'll be staying up at night uh, doing all my work and catching up, which it basically means I'll sleep less. That's a great right. one. And then um, one that, that my wife has pointed out to me that was hard for me to swallow, mm -hmm. but she's absolutely right, is that often I say yes because of my narcissism. Mm -hmm. That, you know, if somebody's asking for help and so I, I start helping them a little bit over the internet or something, which yes. isn't smart, uh, although you can get rewarded for it. Mm -hmm. And and then just to suddenly notice that uh, uh, that 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 gets me into trouble a lot. Uh, so what's the disadvantage of saying yes in that case? Uh, what, what, to, to get into to trouble, mm. uh, you know. Yeah, kind of. You take on too much, and then it blows up in your face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. right. Right, and particularly with me, when it's you're doing something kind of out of narcissism to sh to show how clever and wonderful mm. you are. That's the kind of thing that's really going to blow up in my face. Yeah. Uh, so that that's a good one to to be aware of. Another one for me is that. Uh, uh, you know, I've, I've been saying no a lot lately too, Jill. I, I canceled all of my workshops for the first half of the year. Yeah. Except for the, the two with you, which are here at home. I don't have to go to airports. Right. And uh, that that was a great relief. And then I've been, and then I cut back on, I had a lot of things I was doing on my website for people, which I love mm -hmm. doing, but like I had the Tuesday tips and the Wednesday solutions and and then we had our Facebook our, our, live every week, which every we week, to and, and, and we just decided to cancel it. You know, until January, we're going to have an awesome Facebook live on political communication in the era of Trump and, and intense division. What do you do when a family member is a huge Trump supporter and you're a Trump hater, or vice versa? Mm -hmm. How do you communicate with family when there's so much hatred and division, like in the time of the Civil War? We'll we'll do that in January, and we're going to do it when we can catch our breath. And and and, and right. So, well, that David, that actually highlights the other significant disadvantage of saying yes to too much is that your quality goes down. Yeah. So that's like to me, that's a big deal. If I yeah. I say yes to more things, the truth is, then I'm letting things slip. I'm dropping yeah. balls. 
levels and yeah. quality goes down. And there are things that you love to do. Uh, you, you know, I've been saying, no, I'm kind of like, I'm going to go into retirement for six months and I'll emerge from retirement again. So going into retirement means I'll only have 40 hours a week <laughs> instead of 80 hours a week. But I'm going to retire from my retirement. But like yesterday, um, after the hike, I haven't, ha I haven't had time to do this for a long time because I've taken on so much. I, I, I've been saying no, so I got into bed, watched TV, but I knew I'd fall asleep. Uh, and, and I've dozed off, and when I woke up, Misty was on my lap. It would have been my dream to have the kitty be on my lap uh, and start doing that again. And I started stroking her, and, you know, I slept with her on my legs for more than two hours. And I would wake up and just rub her tummy, and then mm. she'd start purring and squeaking. It was just like <laughs> heaven. And so for me, it's it's saying what what is really important to me. Like I love doing podcasts with Fabrice, even though we we just had a big fight on a live podcast, which was horrific. But we'll use that to deepen our relationship. But I love doing that. I love doing stuff w with you, Jill. The Tuesday group, the Sunday hikes. But you, you know. Are you going to have time to, to be alive when, when you're alive? When I moved to, to Penn from uh, Highland Hospital, uh, I was just, I was such a terrible medical student. I cut all my classes. I was a hippie. I, I was a hedonist. When I went into my internship and residency, I, I turned the opposite. I became like a work dynamo. And when I moved back to Calif back to Penn, to Penn one of my supervisors said, "Now, because he knew how hard I was working, and he said, David, when you go back to Penn, just remember to take, you know, at least a half a day a week staring at walls. <laughs> he was just saying, take, take time off, and that helped me with the guilt. Yeah. Because sometimes when you're not working all the time, you, you feel guilty, and then you work, and you feel like you're worthwhile because you're producing something. So to take a page out of your book, Fabrice, you've got to find out what your values are mm -hmm. and, and go for what you value in, 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 in life. And, you know, like this podcast, you know, maybe, well, some people will hear it, but it's probably not going to go viral. It probably won't end up on the New York Times tomorrow, although I wish it would. But it's just fun hanging out with you guys. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm glad you're bringing out the values because uh, that's another disadvantage of saying yes. Uh, you're compromising yourself. Yeah. And, and I, also, go ahead. I think when we're doing that, there, there's a big pain inside. Yeah. And also, then people can take advantage of you. Sometimes yeah. that's happened to me. Yeah. People yeah. use me because I, I, I tend to say yes, and then I get hurt by those yeah. people when their dark side emerges. Well, in the dark, and, and if you say yes to something that you do feel ambivalent about, then you end up feeling also, you could end up feeling mad at the person. Well, that's like what even, Fabrice and I were talking about on, you know, our fight was based on that. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know about your fight, but I, I, I mean, I, I know even if I, people, people, therapists sometimes will take a low fee patient, right? Even though they yeah. don't want to. Yeah. And then they end up feeling annoyed with the patient for the fact that they're not a full fee patient, which yeah. is like kind of basically unethical, you know, to take a patient on that you don't feel good and excited about taking, right? Yeah. So but the point is that we say yes to things that we don't really want to do, then we end up feeling bitter and angry sometimes at at the person and it was their right to ask, right? Just as it's our right to say no. So we end up having kind of misguided or misplaced anger and frustration. Now I love what you're saying, Jill, because I've had many women in my practice who were kind of quasi dating some man that, that they definitely want to get rid of. Yeah. But, but they could not say no. Yeah. And they'd say, because I don't want to hurt his feelings. And then they'd end up hurting the guy more. Right. When they finally dump him, or six months later, or eight months months later. But you can not only hurt yourself; you can hurt other people. Just totally. like what you're, you're you're saying, Jill. If 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 you don't have the courage to to say no and to take take charge of of your life, there, there's a couple techniques that that I want to contribute that we could practice right right now for, for folks. Sure. 
if you if one one thing that was helpful for me and for a lot of my patients is called punting and it just i've written about it in, in feeling good or one of my books but it just when someone asks you to do something and and you're ambivalent and you're torn and you kind of realize you have mixed feelings but you don't know what to do and you don't know how, what to say you can punt and it just means to 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 tell the person let that's a great idea that you've got let me let me just think about it i want to check my schedule and, and and i'll get back to you on that and then you can give yourself a day or two to figure out how to say no great gracefully yeah um, that makes sense yeah. yeah that that's very useful it you know it gives you a chance to not be on the spot when you make your decision yeah, and and then another thing would be just to 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 say no in a very kindly and flattering way. That the the problem is sometimes the submissive person who's always pleasing others tries to change and then goes into this opposite of submissiveness, which is a hostile demandingness. Right, and, and then relationships explode be, because they're they're going from one extreme to the other extreme, and they say, "Oh well, being assertive and." demanding my rights doesn't work so I'll go back to being being submissive how how do you say no in a loving manner uh Jill well yeah, Jill I mean, by, by the way Fabrice and I want to talk to you about <laughs> doing a couple more podcasts tomorrow that <laughs> will we have these really great topics and we we just think you'd be perfect yeah we, we really need you we can't do it without you <laughs> well thank you guys I feel um honored and flattered that you'd like me back on some podcasts and you know I Great. love the time would work for you tomorrow I love working <laughs> with you guys um, it's always so much fun and yet um, I, I'm not going to be able to do the podcast tomorrow that's good that's good <laughs> you know what I like to what, what you said What's, is that you didn't give a reason if you had said something like oh you know I, I have a, a workshop tomorrow then we could have come back with well, how about, what about after the workshop? That's right. Or, you know, but if you don't yeah, give a reason. It's, that's kind of like controversial, right? Like some people think that it's helpful to give a reason. It kind of justifies your saying no. But I think oftentimes what you're saying is true. It's almost like a trap. It's like, I'm just kind of, you know, even if it's true, I'm feeling like I need to justify myself. And then you guys can always come back and say, oh, but well, if Tuesday doesn't work, how about Thursday? Rather than I wish I could, I would love to, but I'm not going to be able to do this thing. Yeah, but it's, it's not always bad right. uh, to give a reason. I I, I, a woman recently asked me to present at a, at a, at a workshop, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I, it, it, it wasn't something that I really – one wanted to do and I was just able to tell her you know I've sworn off from from workshops for, right for you know at least the next six months and feel free to contact me at some time in the future if you if you like and then and that that that's a you know that I'm yeah. really flattered to be asked and sounds like your organization is doing some some terrific some terrific work or something something like that now the other thing but anyway that's that's funny what grade did you give yourself and how did you feel when you were saying no oh um i felt kind of uncomfortable and i mean i i, I also had a little bit of humor because i had the sense that you guys were teasing because you were sort of you know throwing it right into the podcast right now but um but if it were real, I felt uncomfortable, a little bit nervous. Um, and I think in terms of a grade, I would give myself maybe like a B plus. I think I did a nice job of starting out and saying, wow, I'm, I'm honored and I'm flattered, all of which was true. It just felt like it ended a little bit abruptly when I was like, but I'm not going to be able to do that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, and uh, I, I have a suggested uh, cor correction, and it's easy to see you not. It's great to see you not getting an A plus because you're always <laughs> giving A pluses. Uh, but it was real, so it's harder when yeah. it's, when it's real. The, to, 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 you you could have used your anxiety in a positive mm -hmm. way. Self disclosure. The, the I feel right? statement. What totally. would that have been? That would have been so much better. I love that. Um, yeah, so I would say, David, Fabrice, thank you so much for asking me, and I feel really honored that you guys want me to be a part of your podcast. I love working with you guys, and I feel, you know, kind of guilty and, and nervous actually saying no to you both, because I really respect you both and care about you so much, but I'm not going to be able to do, you know, another two podcasts for, with you guys. 
or uh, whatever that, that ended weird, but I, I, I'm sorry. I can't do the podcast that you're asking. Yeah. And it's really hard yeah. for me because I, I can't think of anything more fun than working with yeah. you guys. Yeah. 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 So, something like that. I no. mean, even if I were to say, I think the more self-disclosure around I've been, I, I'm, I've been saying yes to so many things lately and I'm feeling kind of stressed and overwhelmed. So I feel sad that I can't do this with you guys because I know it would be so much fun, but I'm, but I have to say no to sort of take some time for myself. Yeah. Yeah. I don't right. know. How was that? It was B, a, a B plus. I'm still not, not nailing it. Yeah. Uh, why do you think? Well, you, you, you just, yeah, I'll, I'll give just, uh, you know, the, we need more stroking, us guys, even okay. fakey stroking, and and just say, but it's so hard for me because you know yeah. you you are two of the my favorite people to work with, and I just love your <laughs> podcast, and and uh, so yeah. I, I well, I, give me because you know I, I still love you both. I I think you, you on my part, you still got an A, Jill. I think that <laughs> yes, of course, I love the stroking, but uh, I I I know about. Being the uh, the asker, I kind of need to understand that I'm coming to a hard stop here. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to keep pushing. Pushing, yeah. Yeah. Now, the other technique that I was going to, and that was really beautiful because it was so real, Jill. It, it made yeah. the Yeah. And also, can I say one more quick, can I give you one more quick example yeah. that yeah. might be fun just for you guys to hear? So this is like where I have failed in the past. So my kids, that would be another great example of my kids asking for things and it being hard to say no. Um, and so like a good example of this, I, I really love to cook and I love to bake. Um, and I love to do things, those things for people that I love, especially like my kids and family and friends and stuff. So like sometimes my, you know, kid might say, oh, can you, let's say it was like, oh, can you make us brownies tonight? And um, I really want to, but I, we really don't have time. Like we're in a rush or I have too much to do. I've got this or that, or it's too late. And so oh, this is so cute. Like sometimes what happens is I'll say, yeah, I'll, I'll be like, uh, okay, sure. Let's do brownies. And then we'll be making brownies together, but I'll be really grouchy <laughs> because yeah. I'm annoyed and I'm stressed and I don't actually have the time. And so my, you know, 11 year old even is so adorable that he'll be like, mom, why did you say yes to making brownies? I would rather you just said no than do it with me and be mad the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, right? well, like you're like smarter than I am, you know, and I'm like, oh, you're right. It's totally my bad. Like, I, I need to work on saying no to you. And he's like, yeah, I'd rather you just said no and we did something else than do it and just be mad at me. You, you know? have a very aware kid. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But anyway, that that's just the perfect example of right in that moment, David, to, to take a page from your book, I, I would do better saying, oh, Andrew, I would love to make brownies with you. I love baking. I love hanging out with you. And you asked me in such a sweet way. That sounds like so much fun, but I know I don't have time to do it right now. And I feel bummed that we can't do it together, but, but I'm going to have to say no. Yeah. Right. That's an A plus there. Um, do we have time for a quick feared fantasy? Well, before we do that, um, uh, I wanted to, to comment on something you said, David, that sometimes you, you do want to give a, a reason. Um, some people who have written about this uh, say that instead of giving like a logistical reason, like, no, I don't have the time, I need to do this, or I have to, to do that. There's too much on my plate right too now. Too much on my plate. Mm -hmm. uh, instead, the reason it becomes like a value reason. Well, I, I'm not the kind of person who does X, or uh, it's not what I do, or uh, it becomes who I am, no longer circumstantial. Right. Well, like David's was kind of like that with the workshops. Like I won't be doing any workshops. Exactly. It's, yes. You know, yeah. it's sort of like a policy statement. Yeah. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be right. Like if someone I'm trying to think what's a good example of that. Another, I mean, David's is a good example of that. You have other examples, Fabrice, so well, of when you would say, though, like, I'm not the kind of person who does, or like, so, I don't. So let's say somebody wants me to, to uh, you know, read their paper and, and, uh, and give comments on their paper. Let's oh, say that's a good client. one. Oh, I'd yeah. hate to do that. And, and, and uh, I, I would say, you know, I, I, I just don't do this for my patients. Yeah. Oh, that's a that's good one. In that's a patient, not what I do. But, yeah, but it, but then in a commercial thing, I get a request for an endorsement pretty much 
once a week, at least once a week, someone has sends to say, I have this new book and you're going to love it. And uh, could you give me an endorsement? And I, I don't want to give endorsements because in the first place, I'm a slow reader. In the second place, their book is probably shitty. Excuse me for saying it. <laughs> <laughs> in the third place, I just don't want to get involved with having to, I don't have enough time to, to be looking at books and evaluating them. So I just, I just, just say to them, you know, good luck. It sounds like you're, doing something uh, terrific here. I'm sure it could be of help to, to many people. Sadly, I, I have to apologize. I, I don't do, I don't do book endorsements or yeah. product endorsements, but I just want to wish you all the best of luck in the world, you know, and, and sincerely David Sons. Is that right. kind of what you're talking about, Fabrice? Yes, uh, exactly. This is, you know, Jill had the right word. It's a matter of policy. Yeah. But it's a policy that sticks to what your internal values are. Yeah. That's actually that's actually what I do when people come to my door. By the way, it just reminded me that was the, and it, it's the perfect solution. So when anyone comes to the door and rings the bell for whatever reason, if it's not someone I know, I actually just say, without opening the door through the door, oh, I don't open the door for people that I don't know. Unless they're there with Jesus comic books, you'd right. take that, wouldn't you? I shouldn't say that, but they come to our door all the time. I just open the door and I say, God bless you. And you're doing beautiful work. We, we have kind of uh, some uh, urgent things going on right, right now. And sadly, we can't talk to you, but best of luck with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that one of the, the things about uh, saying no is to do it in a warm and, and caring way. Mm -hmm. uh, could we have time for a feared fantasy? Sure. This was an exercise I used to do with patients, and I think it was occasionally helpful. Like, Jill, what, what are you afraid of in saying no? What are you afraid that we might be thinking? Okay, so if I said no to you guys, just to make it yeah. real, yeah. Um, oh. Or you could be a, par a patient, I'm too. Afraid. You know, you can make up some stuff. Right. No, I guess I, I'm afraid you'd be disappointed in me. Okay, that's a good uh, one. Maybe so angry what? with me. Okay, okay. Uh, maybe not ask me um, to do things with you in the future. <laughs> oh, this is great. Um, thought you'll find other people to do this kind of stuff with you, and then I'll miss out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you ask your patient to write these things down, and then say, we'll go into an Alice in Wonderland nightmare world where this will really uh, c come true. Um, and uh, you want to be Jill or do you want to be uh, David and Fabrice? Um, what, what, which way do you think? It, I mean, like, I'll do I think do you should either. be Jill. Okay. I'm going to be then, Jill. I'm going to try. That means to respond. You're going to be um, the... Colleagues David, from hell. Yeah, David and Fabrice from hell. And we actually say yeah. the things that, you, that you're afraid that we're thinking, that right. most people would never say and, and see if you can handle it. I'll start out, and then you can go, Fabrice, we'll, we'll do tag team and see how yeah. it does, okay? Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so anyway, Jill, we, we were serious about wanting you to do two more podcasts with us, and can we just go ahead and schedule them now? So David and Fabrice, I'm, I'm so, super honored that you want to do more podcasts with me. This is such a fun way to spend my time, and I, I love connecting with you guys in this way, and you guys do such awesome work. And I feel really um, kind of sad and also nervous, um, but I, you know, saying no to you guys because I admire you both so, so much. Um, and, but I do have to say no, that I don't have the time now in my schedule to do more podcasts with you guys. Well, what I have, do have to say, Jill, is I'm extremely disappointed in you. I mean, I, I used to really have a high esteem for you, but now I'm, I'm so disappointed that you just can't do two simple podcasts for us. Yeah, ouch, Fabrice, you're hitting, it, hitting me where it hurts because I really care about you and it makes me feel sad that you're disappointed and, and disappointed in me. Um, but I get it. it I, I know that the podcast mean a ton to you and David. And, um, and again, I'm, I'm honored that you would want me to be a part of them. Um, that, that makes me feel really, you know, special and, and uh, sad that I can't, you know, kind of do what you're asking of me. Well, Jill, I want you to feel reassured that I'm not disappointed in you, but I am angry. 
think of all the things I've done for you. I mean, you came to the West Coast. You had lame cognitive therapy training in the East. I've, I've given you a fantastic skills, a fantastic feeling good institute. And, and now you won't even help us with two little podcasts. Uh, How was that? That was so... <laughs> Breaking my heart. <laughs> I'm going to need some help. <laughs> um, no, that was, the, I mean, fantastic in terms of the role of the feared fantasy. <laughs> um, David, you're right. You have given so much to me. Uh, I can't even tell you how grateful I feel for everything that you have given to me and uh, for what an amazing influence you've had on my life. Um, and it sounds like you're saying that because you've given me these things that I owe you um, my time. Is that, is that kind of what you're saying, that our relationship? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yeah. So that feels kind of sad to me, David, because it sounds like you're basically saying that our, because you've done some amazing things for me, <laughs> our relationship is, is such that um, it's kind of tit for tat. So if you do something, I, I must... I must uh, kind of, you know, obey or, or, or do what you're asking of me. Is that, Have I got the rules right? <laughs> okay. How am I doing? Uh, yeah, how do you think you're doing? That was awesome. I, I think I did a good job there. Absolutely. Your turn, Fabrice. Well, I mean, regardless of your relationship with uh, David, um, I've made a big decision now. I'm not going to ask you ever again because it, I just, I mean, it's just too unreliable. I, I need to be able to count on you. Oh, man, you guys are tough. That was, that, that's rough. So, Fabrice, let me just see if I got it straight first. So you're saying that because I have said that I can't do the, the um, podcast, this particular podcast, that means that I'm unreliable. So if I, if I ever say no to you guys, it means you put me in the unreliable bucket and you've decided I, I won't be able to do any more podcasts for you. Yeah, you got it. That's right. Yes. I, yeah. I have to, we'll have to turn to people who are more reliable. Yeah. Like Dan, Danielle will do a podcast yeah. with us and we'll make her famous. <laughs> and Helen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Well, that, I mean, it, you know, it's honestly really tempting when you say that because it makes me feel like by saying no to you guys, I'm just totally shutting a door. Um, which is kind of my greatest fear, actually, now that, now that you say it. Um, yeah, you're going to miss out yeah, from now yeah. on. Mm -hmm. But it also makes me feel really uncomfortable hearing you say that because I'm thinking, wow, that would be scary to be in cahoots with, with guys who don't allow me to say no or who you know, judge my entire being on, on one, um, uh, on, on, you know, one, I can't do it. Um, so... Gosh, I, I, I hate to say no, but I think I'll have to say no and take care of myself under those circumstances because it sounds kind of scary. Like if I say yes to this, then it means basically I have to say yes to everything in order to maintain my relationship with you guys. And that, that doesn't sound appealing to me. Well, we're, we, we're, 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 we judge you and, and we reject you. <laughs> awesome. Um, <laughs> You're going to have to find someone else to do every podcast for you, I guess. <laughs> what, was that helpful? It was. It was really helpful. Um, it, it was super helpful. It made me realize that if you, I, again, to me, it was very clear. Was, there's overlaps, David, between this and, and Fabrice, between this and the interpersonal downward arrow. It became oh, yeah. really clear to me the, the rules of our relationship. If it were the case that you were profoundly disappointed in me, angry with me, right? If you, you, if know. you held this against me, it means that there are certain rules in our relationship. And that became really clear to me. And also really, I wouldn't want to yeah. a relationship that had those rules. By right? the way, in yeah. the interpersonal downward arrow that you so shrewdly mentioned there, one of the beliefs I created is called, well, like two, one is called perceived perfectionism that you're so familiar with, but, but, yeah. but another one that's slightly different but significantly different is perceived narcissism, where, okay. where you perceive that you can't say no to people, you can't challenge people, you can't disagree with people, or they'll, or they'll reject you. And of course, sometimes, it's you know, we've true. seen in politics, some people are like that, but right. often we, we mis misperceive and, uh, uh, you know, we sell other people short 
while we're selling ourselves short at, at, at the same time. That was such a beautiful demo. F lastly, would we give homework to the patient? Like, uh, can we say no homework? That there's some assertiveness homework exercises that people do that are kind of dopey and, and aggressive that, that I wouldn't be comfortable with, like ordering something in a restaurant and insisting they take it back because it's not right. That seems mm. mean. But, but but could we ask a person to, you know, could there be some saying no that they could do for practice to, to you know, do exposure to, to get into it rather than just doing everything in the office? I would think so. Go yeah. ahead, Fabrice. What I mean, I think that we, we get asked to do things all the time. And, um, you know, sometimes we actually do the punting that uh, uh, David was talking about, like, Oh, gee, I know I, I can't right now have a meeting or, um, but we don't really say no. And the practice might be to, instead of doing the punting, how about trying to say no? And doing this on the spot, maybe not for, you know, super critical things like, you know, will you marry me? <laughs> 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 but, uh, you know, things like, oh, well, uh, could you run this uh, copy job for me, or uh, uh, would you be able to see this client, or you know? Actually, I like your uh, "Will you marry me?" Uh, one. <laughs> no. uh, say that to me, Fabrice. We can role play that. Go ahead. Say will, that. will you marry me, David? Uh, no. <laughs> How you, you, don't, do? you don't love me. You don't love me. You're no. supposed to. No, you you're don't supposed to okay. punt. You're supposed to say, "I have to think about that." <laughs> I'll have to think about that. I'll let you know tomorrow. I have to check okay. with my wife. <laughs> Uh, one last but, thing. Wait, I, I, one thing that, that, that Fabrice said just brought something up for me. It, isn't it, don't we want to think though about context? Like, so if we're, if we're agreeing, if we're all agreeing that values are important, but then we're not just going to tell the patient, you know, say no to the next five things that are offered to you. Cause we actually want to help the patient to discriminate between things they do want to do, That's right. what feels important to them and things they don't want to do right, to preserve what's important to them. So it seems to me it would be useful to just think with the patient, you know, I'd like you to practice saying no to things, you know, for homework. Can you think of any things that might come up in the next week? Well, what are the types of things that you're yeah. asked to do that that's you really want to get better at saying no to? That's and the then way to we, do it. Right? And then we list what are those things. And then we say, you know, like, okay, so do we need to practice in session? Do we need to role play and practice you saying no? Or do we just, is it enough to just say your homework for this week is to say no to those three things? Yeah, that's right. I love it. One last tip I want to give is when I was starting my practice, uh, one of my patients said, you know, I've read this book by Manuel J. Smith called When I Say No, I Feel Guilty. And it was so helpful to me. And and so I, I thought, gosh, I, I could use a little of that myself. So I went and bought the book and read it. And it's very simplistic. It's not sophisticated. It falls short in many ways. But it, it was valuable that, you know, you have the right to, to, to say to say no. And so then I gave it to my wife, who is way smarter than I am. She's way up there with people like you, Jill. <laughs> and, uh, and, and she's very critical. And she liked it. And because and, and cause it really helped her because she was saying yes to, to too much. And then we had our son read it and our daughter read it. And I had a lot of I recommended it to a lot of patients, and just about everyone liked that that book. And I'm sure you can still get it on Amazon. It's just a little thin pa paperback, but uh, yeah, you, you can. I said it's in Kindle format. It's in audiobook format. I, I read it myself, and I found it useful. I think I think we just got David to give an endorsement. By the way, <laughs> hey, there you yeah, go. Yeah. But he didn't ask me. You know, this is given, not not uh, you know, I'm not requested. Leaving. I think his uh, book was published a year before Feeling Good. So it's, it's yeah. not very oh, recent. Yeah. Right, right, right. And um, Well, thank so you, that's Jill. another idea for homework, right? That, that, that's what you were saying, David, right? Oh, that's so something people could do if you want to well, yeah, yes. get yeah. a little uh, extra vitamins in your bloodstream. Yeah. That book could I, uh, motivate you. I wanted you. to say one more thing because it sounded like you were going to wrap up. And, I, and this is uh, you know, about you, David, but it's really related to the topic, which is the truth is that, David, you are so undemanding. 
and so kind um, when you ask things of me and I imagine of others too. And that's one of the things that I, that it's like one of my favorite things about working with you, David, is that I think you have such an understanding of the fact that if you demand things of people, they will do them, but they'll do them with resentment. Yeah. And you're so kind, honestly. And this is not me stroking. I'm just trying to say like, the reason that I also want to say yes. And you know, like you're yeah. so kind, you make it so easy to say no, actually. Um, and that, that's the kind of relationship that I want to have, right? Oh, where okay. one, one where I do feel comfortable saying no. Well, could we add a word? What, what is it that I do? Cause I wasn't aware of that. Cause maybe people are on the other side of the coin would like to know how to ask people for things that yeah. have permission to say, say no. What, what? I think you oftentimes will say something like, you know, would you like to do this thing? I would completely understand if you had too much on your plate and yeah. it wasn't, and you weren't able to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's as simple as that. It's just making yeah. it very clear. You're not demanding. You're not, you need to do this. I really need you to do this. It's always just a, a request and offer. It would be really fun to do this together, but I would totally understand if you didn't have the time to do it. Yeah. You know, I which think, actually makes me want to do it even more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I think it's really important in, in relationships. We, we don't tend to talk about this much on, on this podcast, but uh, the difference between a request and a demand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we could have another show on that maybe at some yeah. point. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, Jill. Uh, you've yeah. brought sparkle, uh, as you always do, to the podcast, but you've also brought. Uh, crystal clear, beautiful, lucid, understandable insights and tips. Yeah, and, and uh, I'm sorry to say, Jill, but uh, it's been so good having you on the podcast. We're going to have to ask you to come back. Yeah, but we, it doesn't have to be tomorrow. We were thinking about maybe when, Wednesday. <laughs> have a good one, everybody. And thank Bye. you, Reese. Uh, thank you, Jill. Thank you, David. Thank you, thank you Jill. Yes, bye-bye. My pleasure. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns' website at feelinggood.com where you will find the show notes for this podcast under the blog page and where you can leave your comments and questions. The website has an abundance of resources for therapists as well as non-therapists, including books, workshops, a list of online training groups around the world, and much more. Theme music is Gypsy Jazz in Paris, 1935, composed and performed by Brett Van Donzel. I am your host, Fabrice Nye, and I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast.